All right, let's do it. On Eric's That's all right. Action. And I know last year a bunch of times when we talk about the D line, a lot of times you'd say you don't worry about him because Coach Az is such a great coach. Now that you got a new guy in the mix, how much do you have to worry about? Him? Well, that's a tough question, but obviously we have a lot of confidence in Coach Aiken, so I don't worry about him too much at all. You know, I haven't been able to see, if I'm going to be totally honest with you, I haven't been able to see how Coach Aiken's coaching style is yet. After two days, we'll find that out. But he's a pro. He'll do a great job. I still don't think I have to worry about that group because of the coach and also because I think we got a veteran group there. You know, we've got four guys that, well, actually, we've got six or seven guys that play a lot of football for us back there. So uh, that group's probably the strongest group on our team right now. And, and this year, our secondary, where you know they were a little bit younger last year, now we got them all back. I mean, we really didn't lose anybody, so that's good. Did you know Coach Hagan at all before he was brought in here? Have you, have you, have you no, him at all in the past? no, no, I didn't know him at all. Uh, obviously, we did our research, and you know everything was positive. I know this. I love coming to work with him every day because he's a good man. He's a He's a smart coach, and he puts time in, and he makes it fun, and yeah, so it's it's all great right now. We haven't played any games yet. We haven't MF'd each other yet, but uh, <laughs> I know I kept that uh, PG. But uh, bottom line is, bottom line is, you're asking me a question that's not not hard to answer, but at the same time, until I see a man's coaching style, uh, it's a little bit difficult because we've had two days, but. On the other side of my mouth, I'm telling you, we hired a very competent, good coach, good person, and I'm sure he'll do a great job and has done a great job at this point. Vibe from having health run in the show, different. How's it different from last year? Well, it hasn't been different for us yet. Uh, I, I read that and heard that maybe because Chip yelled a little bit more, you know, uh, and health's a little bit more quiet. That would be the only thing that I think that uh, the players might have noticed, you know. But um, hopefully we don't go every day comparing Chip to, to Helfrich. And I know, you know, I mean, this is two days in a row for me, and 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 that's the the the, the one million dollar question. And I don't mind it. I'm just, you know, everything's been the same. Uh, there's just two different personalities out there. As far as how we conduct practice, as far as what we're trying to get done, as far as the end result, as far as what we want the product to look like, as far as our practice schedule, everything, you wouldn't even notice a change. I know you poor guys don't get to get in there anymore, but uh, you wouldn't notice a change. The, the most noticeable thing to me is that where Chip is vocal, more vocal, Mark's not as vocal, but that's not a good or a bad thing either way. It's just two different personalities. You've seen it succeed both. I mean, Coach Bellotti wasn't super vocal yeah. either, and he was yeah. successful. Yeah, so. Mike was quiet. Rich was a holler in a good way. Brooks, uh, Chip was loud. Mark's quieter. So I guess the next coach we hire will be a loud coach. <laughs> okay. So, but anyway, a little levity. Uh, anyway, I haven't seen any different. It, it, I think the vibe, the, the only thing I think, I think the vibe, the kids are, are uh, maybe alluding to is there's, and don't misconstrue when I say this word, there's a little softer touch from Mark in the sense that uh, I don't want, you know, I'm not, this is not a knock on chip, but just more of a compassionate, uh, fatherly, have kids, you know, where you get, you have that kind of stuff that you, you understand some of that time patience and things like that. That's all I'm saying. We, we can attest to that. You know, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm I mean, saying? I know what it is. It's yeah. It, it is yeah you guys seen the same thing. Yeah, you know, know what exactly. I mean? It's not a knock. It up. No, it's not a knock on anybody. I mean, it's just, uh, yep. I think when you have kids and you, you're, you're married, you know, I don't want to go too far with this because this will end up being something out there that you know, they'll make a big deal out of it. I know. Not as vocal. You talked a lot about Michael Clay last year, being that glue guy, always knowing where people were supposed to be, not just himself. Don't have it. Don't have it. So do you sense, I know it's only been two days, but you've got guys returning with experience like Brian Jackson. Do you, do you sense there's this guy on this, this this unit that can be that guy? Oh, oh there's always somebody that steps up. You know, right now you're looking at an inside linebacker crew that is raw and injured for spring ball. 
You know, what I mean, there's limited Rip Malone and Hardwick, who who would be the, the 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 you would call the incumbents along with Cassell. You know, those are the three most experienced guys, and two of them are are doing very little. You know, Joe Walker's a JC New guy, so he's learning on the run. But I like what I see from him. But you know, he's going through a learning curve. Brett Bavaro, who's a new guy, you know, freshman, finally getting his chance, red shirt freshman, new to him. The walk-ons, pretty new. You know, whenever you go from, let's be realistic, you ever go from two pros to two guys to two walk-ons to two guys like me, you know, there's obviously a drop-off. You're, you're talking about two of the best inside backers that have probably ever played here uh, in a long time. And as a tandem, uh, we've had some great ones, but as a tandem, I'd put those two up with anybody. So that's a lot of football experience. That's a lot of football knowledge. That's two fifth-year seniors that are going to be in three weeks making a lot of money, more money than any of us sitting right here right now. <laughs> From that leadership standpoint, I think that's Clay was the guy. It, does it have to be a linebacker? Can it be team match? Can, you know, can doesn't be have to be a linebacker. I think we'll get great leadership from Taylor Hart. I think we'll get great leadership from Wade Kelakipi. I think we'll get great leadership from DeForest Buckner. I think we'll get great leadership from uh, Brian Jackson and Eric Dargan and Avery Patterson. Uh, I think I hope to get great leadership from Tony Washington, Boseco Lacumbo. And I think once the linebacker, that's the linebackers that are the guys in there, you know, it's hard to be a leader when you're not even sure you're the guy, you know. You know, it's like, you know, they're not going to follow me uh, to run a marathon or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's hard to be a leader if you can't do it yourself or you're not doing it yourself. Have you had it be a leadership by committee before, or does it always have to be an individual? No, I like it by committee. I like, I like a lot of horizontal and vertical leadership coming from us down and coming from our team leaders down and from, you know, I would like to think that, if Eric and AJ were on the team and they're on the field at the same time, that if Eric saw AJ not hustling hard enough, that Eric would have enough uh, pride about our defense to be able to say, hey, and if he's doing it, to say, hey, AJ, you need to pick it up, man. And AJ, who's a good teammate, would say, hey, thanks, man. You're right. I needed that, and I need to get it better, if that makes sense. That, that, that's when you know you have a good team and good chemistry, as opposed to, I gotta watch my language. You're supposed to. You're going slow, and you're frustrated. And then finally, you go hard for one play, and you say, "AJ, man, I'm going hard. Why aren't you going hard?" And you start yelling at him and cussing, and he starts cussing back at you. Okay, I think I made my point. I think our guys understand that vertical, horizontal leadership. The man to our right, man to our left, are the most important people. And once your team is self-policed, every good football team I've been able to be a part of, if you're self-policed, you have a chance. If I have to always be the bad cop or any of my assistants all the time, it just doesn't work. You hope people have enough pride to, to get it done. And I am rambling here, but I do think we have that. I do think we'll have that. What I can't replace right now and it's every year, so it's not a knock on anybody, is the athleticism of Kiko Alonso, Michael Clay, Dion Jordan, and four, three, four years of experience. Can't replace that in two practices. But every year you go through something in that, in that degree. But we're losing three guys who gonna make a lot of money here in, in about more money than all you guys. <laughs> combined, <laughs> combined. Combined, and combined, me. Right. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> Part of the group. Okay. Coach, Thanks, a couple. Uh, You're couple, welcome. A couple of players. I don't even us. like football. Yeah, Let's go right. ahead. You can tell. Go ahead. Over the past couple of days, a couple of players have mentioned that there's a different vibe in there in the practices uh, versus last year. First of all, and they, that they like it. First of all, do you agree that there's a different vibe in there? And, and, and how would you describe it? I was asked that question earlier, but okay. I'll answer it again. I'm sorry about that. No, that's okay. I think the vibe is in, a, in its simplest form where Chip was more vocal, Mark is more quiet. But as far as how we run the practice, how we expect it to look, how we expect things to be done, where one guy, and, and, and I'm a lot more like Chip, okay? When one guy might be, 
you got to be careful in somebody getting on somebody pretty hard and you know coming at it and challenging him vocally the other guy might be going all right how can we do that better all right let's talk about it so that's i think the difference is the 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 uh, the boisterous as opposed to a more quiet does that make sense and so the kids obviously feel more quiet so there's a different vibe okay uh, we all hope that the, the that the vibe is getting go, all going in the direction to win football games. And I was just, as I was telling Eric earlier, and some of you guys, you know, we can't compare Mark and Chip every day. We can't compare Bilotti to Chip every day. We can't compare Rich Brooks to Bilotti every day. Everybody has a different style. But the message and the goal is all the same. So that's where we are.